Jay and Jay Solaris and Charlamagne the Guy. They're listening to the Breakfast Club. Thank y'all for being like cultural leaders. By the family. The Breakfast Club is where people get their information on the topics, on the artists, and everything like that. I'm winning like that. You guys were nice. Everybody got me all nervous. Like you guys in the Let's not go watch. You're locked into the world's most dangerous morning show. More dangerous than the rock. If you want to break this club, you ain't going to bring it 120 minus one. I come up here. Oh, oh my Jesus. Jesus. This is what y'all grew up in? That's right. Get up out the beds and listen to the greatest show on earth. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 how you feeling, Laura? I feel good. Don't don't say nothing. I want to see his reaction. In I'm real not time. gonna say nothing. I'm not gonna say nothing. I want to see nothing. the reaction in real time. How was your day yesterday? My day was great. It was good. Yeah, I went home. I was, you know, chilling around the house. Mm-hmm. My cousin came up. Hello, cousin. She's here today. Mm-hmm. I don't know why she won't be here with y'all crazies, but she's here. Okay, all right. Now uh, it was a late night for us because, of course, sports were on last night. I don't know if any of you watched Monday Night Football. Last night, the Dolphins played the Titans and the Lions played the Seahawks. Both good, uh, well, I wouldn't say great games. It wasn't tight games, but it was interesting. Very, very interesting. Did you watch any of the games? Envy. No. No, but you can tell me what happened, though. I just, I'll, I'll tell you in front page news. Okay. That, that, that was it. That was it. Okay. There's a huge strike going on right now. So uh, I know they're blocking the containers out there. And this is a, a national news because some of the uh, stuff that's coming in from international will be blocked and will be stopped because they are striking for the containers. So that means cars. That means goods. That means foods. And I'm sure we'll break it down in front page news. What up, Charlemagne? Good morning. How is everybody? How do y'all feel this day? We feel day? great. How do you feel? Charlemagne. Like a virgin. Charlemagne. <laughs> Oh, yo, you got the fresh dye today. Wow. I'm not talking about me. You got the fresh hairline. Oh, damn, y'all got the same dye. Yo, shut up, man. man. Y'all got the same (laughs) dye. Y'all got the same dye. What kind of dye you use? Shut up, man. For your hair. I don't even know what kind um, my hairstylist use. Envy, what kind did I use? Just for men. No, they ain't no, no just for me. No, 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 no. <laughs> whatever, no, you, whatever no, Lauren you, no. you definitely got it on too. Cause you look like you in HD right now. Don't you look like you in HD? <laughs> Yo, leave me alone, man. You got your hair dyed yesterday? For no, me? I did not. Lauren? I did not. You look the same I as yesterday. Don't be, no, you don't be paying attention. I'm in the detail. same exact as yesterday. I didn't do anything different. No, she. All right. Okay. We thought we all stupid, huh? Uh, I didn't do anything different. Uh, none of us can see. Good morning, see. Lauren's cousin. How are you feeling none this morning? None of us can see. You feeling good? None of us got eyes. I'm going to be eyes. talking to you all day because I'm not talking to him anymore. None of us got eyes. You don't right? have eyes. No, please. It's the Let same as you. yesterday. Man, Let please. me see. Put your head down. It's Put the your head same. Down. It's the same. You had a hat on yesterday, Well, Boy, though. you are the no leader matter. of the Black Ink crew right now. You leader <laughs> of the Black Ink. Call you Caesar. <laughs> That's not funny. Jesus Christ. I didn't take that as a joke. At least you're the leader. You're not one of the sheep. It's all right. Oh, my goodness. All right. You can be the Black Sheep with all that Black Ink you got Okay. Hey, today joining us, Congressman Byron Donalds from Florida. He'll be joining us this morning. Yes, he will. Huge Trump supporter and Republican. Oh, well, yeah, he's Republican. So I guess originally he is, from he's a Trump um, supporter. Brooklyn. Yes. He went to FAMU University, then he transferred to uh, Florida State. And now he's a congressman. So we'll talk to him. Yeah, Angela Rob will be joining us for that as well. That's right. And then uh, a comedian. I'm not sure if you know him. He's on tour. He's on this tour called the Black and Mild Tour. Uh, he comes up here a lot, you know. Uh, actually, I don't know why we have him up here so much. The Donald oh Rawlings, I think his name is. Donald Rawlings? Yeah, you know him? You heard of him? Yeah, he'll be joining us this morning, too. So we'll kick it with Donald Rawlings, all right? Let's the choir sh- taste he is. Yes, yeah, so let's get the show cracking. Front page news is next. Morgan will be joining us. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious. Right, so I ain't waiting guy. till Halloween. I'm going to get my Cruella de Vil on now. Go to H Double Hockey Six. <laughs> what? It looks nice. Let's get in mm-hmm. some front page news. <laughs> Good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning, and happy, what is today? Look, New Year's. Tuesday, today is Tuesday. Hold on, before you do the news, let me just do a quick sports. Uh, last night, the Lions beat the Seahawks 42-29, and the Titans beat the Dolphins 31-12, and we just got to send a rest in peace to uh, two legends, uh, Dikembe yeah. Mutombo, Mutombo, NBA legend. Uh, you know, he was known, if you if you don't really watch uh, basketball, he was the one with the finger that always, when he blocked somebody's shot, he would wave the finger at him. That was That's the Kimmy Mutombo. He's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Also, he was a global ambassador uh, for the NBA. That's right. Yes. He died uh, from brain cancer at the age of 58. And also... 58 made, is so young, man. It is. Mm-hmm. 
<sighs> and also Major League Baseball, uh, Pete Rose. He's the all-time hits leader. He died at the age of 83 yesterday. And they wouldn't put him in the Hall of Fame because he had a little gambling problem, but I bet you they'll put him in now. Yeah. And, it, and they had a, I guess he had the gambling problem when he was a coach, right? Not when he was a player, right? When he was coach? I don't remember. Yeah, so. All right, Morgan, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, good morning. So uh, let's get into it. More details are surfacing about the devastating impacts of Hurricane Helene. President Biden said he is deploying every available resource to the areas impacted by the storm. More than 120 people across several states were killed by the monstrous storm, with the death toll likely to rise as there are still people missing. Um, Areas like Asheville, North Carolina, are dealing with what's being described as biblical flooding. Thousands of people remain unaccounted for, and millions are still without power in the southeast. Let's hear from uh, President Biden on his remarks regarding the storm. It's not just a catastrophic storm, it's a historic history-making storm. The entire Southeast and Appalachia. Damage from the hurricane stretches across at least 10 states. Storm surges up to 15 feet and record flooding. Communities are devastated. Loved ones waiting, not sure if their loved ones are okay. I'm committed to traveling to the impacted areas as soon as possible, but I've been told that it would be disruptive if I did it right now. We need to uh, we need to do something for Asheville. Like you know, I, I got I got a call yesterday from my my good brother Bakari Sellers. It, uh, I know I know water is one of the things that they need. So I hit Envy up because he got his positivity water. So we're gonna try to get some water down. Yeah, there. we're gonna try to get some down there. You know, the crazy thing is with the positivity water. I guess there's a water shortage, so water is flying off the shelves. But uh, I spoke to my distributor. We're gonna try to uh, set something up for the by the end of the week. Water's super nice. Very very nice. Yes, Biden said the government will continue to send help to the region as long as it takes to finish the job. He is expected to visit. Uh, those communities impacted by the storm sometime this week. Uh, meanwhile, Vice President Harris, she is reiterating the same thing that President Biden is saying, his remarks, saying the federal government will do everything it can in its power to help those impacted by the storm. Now, she visited FEMA headquarters yesterday to thank those workers who uh, for their response to the storm. Um, let's hear those comments from VP Harris. The devastation from Hurricane Helene is immense. Millions of Americans are without power. Thousands of families have lost their homes. Entire neighborhoods have been destroyed. President Biden and I and all of the folks behind me are with you. We will continue to do everything we can to help you recover and to help you rebuild. So far, more than 3,300 federal personnel are on the ground to assist with recovery efforts. They are deploying food, water, and generators. She also said that she plans to visit the impacted areas as soon as possible, but again, disrupting uh, without trying to disrupt any of the emergency response operations. Mm-hmm. Yes, we'll continue to uh, keep those people in our thoughts and prayers and a lot, and kudos to you and V4 for doing what you can to get resources to them. Um, and it is VP de- debate night. Republican, Republican VP candidate and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance will face off against Democratic candidate Minnesota Governor Tim Walz in a CBS hosted debate tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. There will be no audience and the mics will be open. Now, former President Trump, he asked he was asked if J.D. Uh, he gave any advice to J.D. Vance. And here's what Trump had to say in regards to Vance at the debate. I think J.D. is going to do great. He's a very smart guy. He's done a great job. People like him a lot. No, he doesn't need it. I will. But we've been speaking a little bit back and forth. I think he's in good shape. He said he doesn't need too much um, of his advice, but yeah. Trump also said that he will be doing personal play-by-play of the VP debate. He wrote on his Truth Social platform that he'd be watching the debate between the running mates, uh, J.D. Vance and, of course, Tim Walls, adding that uh, he hopes Harris watches the debate debate too as he live blogs the event. So that could be must-see TV and must-see social media. Well, yeah, I don't want y'all to know it's not going to be a wash. It's not going to be like when Trump went against Biden and Trump washed Biden. It's not going to be like Harris against Trump where Harris was Trump. It's not going to be like that with, 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 with these two. And because I think that, you know, J.D. Vance doing all of this uh, Sunday morning television that he's been doing the past few weeks, mm-hmm. I think that's uh, prepped him very well because he's been asked a lot of, you know, tough yeah. qu- tough questions, right? And he's actually he gives terrible answer. answers, hmm. but, but but he still gives answers nonetheless. And I think that, you know, when, when Tim Walls tries to paint him as weird, as soon as J.D. hits him with the tampon, Tim, and says, you know, you had, you had t- you tried to put tampons in the boy's bathroom, you know, I think that's going it, 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 that's going to make America be like, "What? He did what?" I don't think that has been as loud as uh it hasn't. As 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 it, as it, as it probably 
could be. Yeah. But I think after the night, it will be. And people going to be looking at Tim Walls like, he did what now? And them Trump commercials that we were talking about yesterday the ran crazy last ones, night. That's what I'm saying. They ran crazy last they night, They keep too. running during, transgender commercials during football. During the game. Football, yeah, during the game. Yeah. <laughs> Kamala Harris wants to spend your like, taxpayer like, dollars on uh, prison inmate trans sex changes. Like, what? Yep. Hopefully no. they can stick to the policies, you know. And no, 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 you know that no, ain't happening. Not doing that. Nope. No. You know they're not going to do right, that. All right, well, here's to hoping. We'll talk more uh, in the 7 o'clock hour. Uh, we'll get caught up with go- what's going on in New York with Mayor Adams. All right. And everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. Everything with me is blessed. Call up next, 800-585-1051. Not just me, I'm with the coach of Philly. Hello, who's this? This is Francisco, good morning. Hey, good morning. Get it off your chest. Um, so my question is for Charlemagne. I love Charlemagne. Um, he's big in politics. I work for the federal government um, for about 10 years, and... I want his perspective and his opinion on the New York mayor being indicted by the feds, but yet Donald Trump is whatever, but Clarence Thomas is sitting on the bench at the Supreme Court. Like, how does he feel about that? And do you feel like it's a double standard? Um, I, I don't even know if the standard. I don't even know if the standard is double. I just think there's no consistency across the board, and that's why you know I get upset when I see uh, you know Democrats when I saw people say like you know. Oh, he should step down. He should re- he should resign. And I'm like, well, he is still innocent until proven guilty. And the thing I do it's respect be, about yeah. Republicans, Republicans don't do that to their people. They ride like, to the they, wheels they, fall they, off. They, they, they ride to the wheels fall off. And even when the wheels fall off, they still keep trying to drive the car. Mm-hmm. Not saying that's right or that's wrong. I'm just saying that I, re- I, I, I respect it. Hello, who's this? Jay, Andy, man. Hey, what's going on with me, Pete? My top of the morning, my dog, man. Hey, another day on top of the ground, down on top of me. You said Diddy on top of you. My, hey, Charlotte, not the grand. Play, play, play with you. Play, find you somebody to play with. Uh. No, I That's what I've been trying to tell them. Find you somebody to say You ain't, somebody you ain't somebody heard me say nothing about no Diddy, man. We ain't doing this. You said somebody on top of you. Nah. Who on top of you? I said I woke up on top of the ground. And not the ground I'm doing it He said he See? woke up On top of the ground The ground not on top of him Oh, oh I didn't hear you I thought you said I didn't but hear he you He knows what some other saying I said, but look Your here phone breaking up OG I just want to say Peace and love to you So all of my You doing better I appreciate y'all Finally asking to come on I heart my questions And you understand me Holding her accountable what? Because her Holding the right The American people The word salad Man we We, we not we stupid We not this. going for that you Even said, all, Wait you said Kamala Harris is a cannibal Who likes salad What? Man, you like you. Man, what did she man, say? Like, man, audio. Yeah, you don't hear his head 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 head. He real fun like that. Now, what what I, I am calling to address Memphis though. You know, said nothing like because I, I, I his voice is cutting in and out and cutting forward and backwards. Yo, he could be cutting us out. Don't even. This AI. This no, this phone. ain't no AI. This ain't no AI. This OG Kyle Hart calling back. Yes, sir. I'm like, hey, I want to call. I want to call the Memphis Police Department out for holding the. During the same time as the Tyreek Nichols, they did that to keep people off trying back to and stupid from uh, the real bull that they was on. Yes, sir. It was right. destruct- you understand me? And I just wanted to bring it to public attention because they, <laughs> yo, can you hear me? No, it's, no, no. It's bad I just know you. I just know you saying something about the police in Memphis and Tyrese Nichols. So I'm with you, but I just don't know what you no, said. No, they held he the said- trial. They held the dog trial at the same time holding the Tyrese Nichols trial. They did it to keep people distracted. And I just think the that dog they were talking about Dolph. He said oh, that they Dolph. did Tyrese Nichols at the oh, same time. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. Do I got you, got speak broken t- t- phone or something? Yes. Okay. <laughs> man, hey, because of the hurricane, man, this hard. And the hurricane got the phones acting up, man. Yes, yes sir. Okay. But y'all got the message, though. To the hurricane. Hope all is well. Peace and love. Y'all keep holding it down like y'all doing. Yes, all right, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. You definitely speak broke phone. I know. It's I- because... Yeah, you I speak was, struggle, struggle phone. No, I, was on my I speak third or fourth, if you yes, accidentally sir. call me and your phone's in your pocket, I can make out every word. Oh. That's what I speak. I see. Mm-hmm. I was on my third or fourth, yes, sir, and he just kept talking. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So you put out the same energy. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Oh, this is H-Town. What's happening? What's going on? What's going on? Good morning. What's up, brother? Get it off your chest. 
I just want to say happy Nigerian Independence Day. What do you say? Tell me. Happy Nigerian uh, Independence Nigerian. Day to all his Nigerians. Yeah, I caught that. Yeah, I heard that. Love you all. Love you too, King. God bless you. Yeah, all right, sir. Oh, have a blessed one. I got that one. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Marcus from Ohio. Marcus, what up, man? Your phone sounds the best this morning. Get it off your chest, brother. Uh, yeah, the one thing I want to get off my chest is what um, VP uh, Kamala Harris said is that uh, people are like one check away from losing their homes. So I think they should put like a federal regulation on these companies up in rent. Okay. Yeah, I'm with that. Yeah, people out here struggling. You know what I mean? I'm a single dad of three myself. A single dad of three? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. And you know what I mean? And I do well, but it just, with all these. You know what I mean? Them this regular uh, them going up on rent is just crazy. It's just ridiculous. That's why I like her uh I like her plans to rebuild the middle class, man. You know, like she was on all the smoke yesterday. And I mean she said this before, but Joe, when she mm-hmm. says things like people should have the opportunity to save money. People should be able to, you know, put away a little bit of money to take a vacation when they want to. People shouldn't be stressing when Christmas time comes. That's right. You know? I was in a hair store yesterday and it was his dad in there with his two babies mm-hmm. and he was definitely like I think he was drunk like I could smell it on them and he was like don't he literally said to me don't mind me I'm just a single dad trying to figure it out it's really rough right now and I was like man like I just felt so bad for him it was nothing I could do mm-hmm. but I just was like dang I hope stuff do get better you trying to get hair for his daughters no it was his two sons one, I think one of his sons had eczema I was mm-hmm. helping him figure out like a cream for mm-hmm. the eczema or whatever and as he was talking to me I guess he noticed that I noticed he was drunk and mm-hmm. he was like I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm a single dad. And I was like, don't worry about it. So they, they checked out or whatever. But when I left, I was like, dang, all I could do is like pray for him. Mm-hmm. But it's just crazy because I'm like, he a single dad. I don't know. He probably financially trying to figure it out. I don't know why he's a single dad. It's just a lot going and on. And don't say people. all you can do is pray for him. Prayer is very powerful. Okay. I mean, I just felt like I wanted to do more. How much was that? That is a lot. I, I paid for the, pay for the cream. Yeah, it wasn't. They did, They only had like uh, the white and blue lotion on. What's I have that no called? idea what that is. Yeah, and some hair grease. Like I, he didn't know what to pick out, so you I helped him pick out the. Yeah, but I just was like, man. Well, was you still had your braids in when you when you did that? Why? I'm just asking. why. I'm just. How, how did this go from? No, I'm just asking. Prayer is powerful. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna pray about next? No, I'm just asking. Did you to rebuke the demons on but that no, side? No, did you still have your breath? Because he probably was like, "Damn, I know she, you know, clearly needed, but, but she looked out back. for me." You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You keep that. She you still looked out for me. I didn't. The braids was out. It oh, was just like you, the little, you. you know, okay. the little. My hair was just like out. He probably was like. Oh, so he probably was like, "Damn, man, it was this little homeless girl that was in the store, and she looked out for me, man." You just never know your blessings can come. As long as he felt blessed. Yes, you know, it wasn't that's about true. me. That's right. That's Get right. it off your chest. Yeah. 800-585-1051. We got Jess with the mess with Lauren Rosa coming up. We do. We are, um, just take a moment for the Kimpe Matumbo. Okay. All right. We'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. The news is real. Well, news is real. Lauren's Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach with Lauren. Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk, talk to me. Yesterday, it was announced that there is a new Chris Brown documentary. Uh, This documentary will be airing on ID, Investigation Discovery. Mm -hmm. Let's take a listen to the trailer that they dropped yesterday. Chris Brown is the man. Get used to that right there. Chris Brown's an amazing and talented musician, but let's call a thing a thing. He's an abuser of women consistently, unapologetically. Did Chris pull a gun on that girl? When is your hearing for your uh, restraining order? There's a long list of various different women. Are you pretty upset? Are you sure you don't really call this as advocates have come talk to you? Who've accused Chris Brown of assaulting them. Senator Chris Brown has been detained in an alleged case of rape. He has an audience full of assault deniers. No, I have not spoken about this matter publicly, but that's the only way that he can be stopped. So this uh, documentary, and there's been several documentaries over the last couple of years following all, you know, all of the incidents that have happened with Chris Brown. But this documentary mm-hmm. um, airing on ID uh, was shared with the caption, Chris Brown, a history of violence charts Chris Brown's past 
all the way back to his troubled childhood explores the lasting impact of the cycle of abuse and poses the question, how does a man with such a violent public record maintain his superstar status with expert and cultural commentary layered throughout? The documentary provides thoughtful reflections into each survivor's experience and a psychological destruction in the aftermath of their abuse. Now, when this hit the timeline, it, it hit like it was Variety, Hollywood Reporter, mm -hmm. X, Instagram. And as always with Chris Brown, I believe that reactions are all over the place. Some people I know when I saw it, I was like, why right now? Like, mm -hmm. what, did, what did he do right now? Like, why are we seeing this right now? We've seen so many documentaries and heard right. so much about this. Um, but there are other people on the other side that every single time, you know, someone says that people are like, well, he should always be reminded because this is what happened. And in this uh, documentary. From what I can tell from the trailer, of course, they're going to go into the Rihanna, which happened back in February uh, 2009 when he was 17 years old. Um, and Karuchi, that situation, she's mm -hmm. also shown in the documentary as well. Uh, they were together from 2011 to 2015. She filed a restraining order in 2017. And then there is a another person who we don't know the identity of that is also, it, it seems like... Is that from the this, voice that they, they The voice that's kind of chopped and screwed, yeah, yeah that is like mm -hmm. speaking out on something as well, too. There's hashtags being used, like no excuse for abuse. Um... So I wonder so, if they spoke to the victims, though. I wonder if they spoke to Rihanna, if they spoke to Karuchi, because that might be triggering to them. They might not want that out there. They might not want their name involved with this. I'm not. Well, we don't know. All we have is a trailer right now. I just for me, when I saw it, I was just like, at, I just didn't understand. Like, why? Like, why, why right now? now? Like, right, we, yeah. everybody you No, know, there's not too many people right now who don't know his past what has happened it's just like why stir it up and they just and then recently id um they did a doc uh diddy documentary as well too it um, came out already let me double check I don't think that, it came but, out already. yeah but there i mean this so, would be like the third diddy documentary already right the, the, yeah because tmz did one as well too which i understand because that's it's, it's relevant it's topical right how now how do you do a documentary right now when he's still going through it he's the case is still going on well, because people we don't know the truth. We don't know what's right or what's wrong. We don't know what's factual and what's not factual. There's still so much information. Like we don't know what he is charged of, but it's like a like for instance, TMZ did one documentary. It took you through everything that led up to where we are now. Cassie's filing all that, and then it's like stay tuned for more. Now they're they just dropped another one where we now have the attorney talking through the case and well the uh, bell and the baby oil and all that stuff. Is they're gonna keep you going along? But I just say this to say that I feel like with the Chris Brown stuff, like news wise topically right now in my opinion I wasn't looking for this I, it, it caught me off mm -hmm. guard when I saw it on, on the timeline well the problem I have with the you know the documentary like the Chris Brown documentary is when it comes to the victims and alleged victims these networks aren't doing it because they're trying to actually no. raise awareness to anything they're just capitalizing off trauma are they giving the proceeds that they will make off the documentary to any domestic violence organizations any mental health organizations any organizations that help people work through trauma if not then they're just profiting off people's pain and I, and I don't like that um, are, are, are any of the proceeds going to any of those things? I'm looking at, you know me, I'm looking at it right now. And, 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 in, and in Chris's case, I don't know how you create these kinds of documentaries based off allegations. If you're reporting on things that actually happened, things he's been arrested for, I get it. But putting a new accuser on there, having her face covered up, distorting her voice, how do we know that's even real and not something done for TV? Mm -hmm. And shouldn't that person be going to the police or suing him? How do you go to shoot a documentary first? And why would a person at a network want them to do a documentary before they go to uh, the law or take legal action. Well, I'll tell you why because they care about producing a show and getting ratings more than they do alleged victims. I mean, that's television, right? But at the same time, I think a, a network like ID who does these things, I'm sure they have a legal team that is going to make sure that even if it's just alleged, there's ways around. But why? But, but why would you? If somebody came to you and told you that story. Why is your mind to say, okay, let's put them on TV? Wouldn't you tell them to go take legal action? Wouldn't you tell them to go to the law first? Oh, Why would you just exploit that story for television? Me as a person television? or ID as a network? Because ID as a network, they need to make their Chris money. Brown is always a hot button topic, yeah, no they, matter that, what. They want right? to make their whack, money, though. It is whack. It's that, horrible. That's the content era that we live in. You know what I mean? Controversy that's sells. That's whack. Now, to answer your question, ID does have a No Excuse for Abuse campaign, and it's now in its third year in partnership with No More Foundation. Um, and this is an effort to stem domestic violence and sexual assault Oh, it's oh, it has an effort to stem domestic violence, sexual assault, um, and its aim is to shed light on uh, the dynamics of intimate partner violence with programming and resources. So they do provide resources, and a lot of their programming is dedicated to empowering individuals and communities through 
these uh, programs and the different campaigns they do. So the proceeds from these doc going to that campaign? I don't know that exactly. However, mm. they do say that they provide resources to show survivors that their loved ones, it's, so, show survivors and their loved ones that they are not alone and that, that there is help available. So that it seems yeah. that way, but I can't answer that 100%. It seems like it's, it's, it's just wild to me that an, it, uh, an alleged victim would come to you and tell you this story and your mindset is, well, let's put them on television. Yeah. Let's like, uh, did, I want to know that the person, I would have encouraged the person to go take Follow legal charges. action or go to law enforcement. Why are you just put a camera in their face? Yeah, I never Whether you black them and change their voice or not, like right. why is that your mindset? I never liked that and I never liked the fact that they could just do documentaries on somebody's life and not get it authorized. Like they could, uh, we could just do a documentary on, on Lauren. Yeah, you right could. Now. You could. But that ain't right. That, but it's your life story. I'm telling your life story. That's whack. I mean, right now, that'd be a short story. You oh. got to give us some time. Oh. Right. That's okay. yeah, oh, just because yours is like tribal decades it old. Is. It is. I am there. You I've fossil been, fuel. Like, around. don't please relax. I've been around. I'm, yeah, we know. <laughs> They're working on docs yeah. on us right now. You're, you're worn out. You're worn, we know you've been around. You're worn out. I've been around. Flipped upside down. No, Baby old all around. It's called, we know. It's called longevity. Mm -hmm. It's called longevity. and consistency. Okay, we've been around for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, all right. Fifteen all right. years here. On all right, gals. All right, gals. <laughs> gals. 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 It's gals, a, gals. Envy. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna do a documentary. It's called "The Trauma That Is the Trauma." <laughs> what? <laughs> you are trauma, and you cause the trauma. Mr. Mental Health. All right. Well, that is just with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. When we come back, we got front page news. And then Congressman uh, Byron Donalds from Florida will be joining us. So don't go anywhere. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa filling in for Jess. And let's get in some front page news. We had some quick sports last night. The Lions beat the Seahawks 42-29. The Titans beat the Dolphins 31-12. What's up, Morgan? What's up is October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, okay? Make sure you check out the Tatas. It aims to promote screening and prevention of the disease, which is the second leading cause of death in the U.S. Breast cancer is one of the most commonly diagnosed cancers in women, and um, it also impacts men, whether you believe it or not. It also increases with age. About 83% of breast cancer diagnoses each year are among women age 50 and older. So the daughters, the moms... Check out the tatas. Ladies, check out your tatas. All right, so here in New York, uh, Mayor Adams is seeking dismissal of bribery charges against him. Adams' lawyer, Alex Shapiro, is asking a federal judge to th throw out one of the uh, charges in the five count indictment against Adams, calling it extraordinarily vague. Now, Shapiro argues that the accusations against Adams don't meet the federal definition of bribery and cited a recent ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court in June that ruled that public corruption didn't apply to gifts and payments meant to reward public officials. Now, the mayor pled not guilty to accepting luxury travel benefits and illegal campaign donations from Turkish officials, allegedly in exchange for political favors. Uh, yesterday, Mayor Adams spoke to reporters over calls to resign and reiterated that now is not the time to quit, but to step up. Let's hear from Mayor Adams and continue to deliver for the city. The attorneys will handle uh, the legal aspect of it. I'm going to stay focused, and you heard me say it over and over again. Stay focused, no distraction and grind. All of y'all hear that in your sleep. The countless number of people who have called me, texted me, stopped me on the street, uh, and say, listen, do what you're doing, Eric. Keep doing what you're doing. You brought this city back. Adams did go on to say he did nothing wrong, and of course, time will tell. Um, he is due back in court on Wednesday at the same time. Um, he's hinting that he's got a story to tell. He spoke to the community church over the weekend, and it says he's focusing, um, he is focused on his job, but he's also writing a book. Uh, let's hear from Adams on his book. This is going to be a bestseller. Get that best bottle of wine that you have. Right, and those of you who are into cannabis, you can roll a joint and just sit down and read my book not not yeah, right now not, 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 not right now this, world, this is why people be like feeling how they feel about him it's nah. like I think, next I think he's gonna relax. be a say less that like he needs to relax just a little you know bit what right though now. maybe he doesn't why not not because right now no no no, no i'm gonna tell you why and, and and you know what and it just it just doesn't feel right when you have someone like donald trump running for president because Donald Trump is out here selling everything Donald Trump was just online selling $100,000 watches just, yep. just, just this weekend you are very smart what is the difference between Donald Trump and Mayor Eric I Adams I know that but even though I know Eric Adams is black and Donald Trump is white I still don't like it like you know it just doesn't feel right mm -hmm. when we're saying this person should stand down Wait. but then this person is running for the highest office in the land well not only that unless he feels like he can't get his story out the correct way that he will never be able to, to process his own story so he puts it in a book so people could actually read his story before he goes on trial that could be smart. I just don't like it. I want us as Americans and us as a society to have consistency. 
You know what I'm Mayor, saying? Mayor Adams said people will be amazed by what has happened in his life for the last two years and 10 months. So like you said, Envy, maybe he want to tell his story. He want to get it out there before anybody else can. Um, of course, uh, he has had several conversations with New York Governor Kathy Hochul regarding this whole incident, um, who does have the power to remove him. Um, she says she's not planning to take any action on removing uh, Adams from office right now. Following his legal le legal troubles, excuse me, uh, Hochul was asked uh, what it would take to remove Adams, and here's what she had to say in regards to that. I'm not going to stand here and give it right now. My responsibility is to make sure that New York City functions at, at a highly effective level and I'm monitoring the situation and watching for that to occur. I'm giving the mayor an opportunity now to demonstrate to New Yorkers and to me that we are riding the ship, that we have the opportunity to instill the confidence that I think is wavering right now and to power forward with an effective government. And, and she's she's right. You know, it just doesn't feel right that we as a people hold one person to a higher standard yep. than the other. This is why people don't know right from wrong, because we treat everybody differently. When you have somebody like Donald Trump running for president of the United States of America with all the charges that he's had, the things that he's been convicted of, mm -hmm. why are we so quick to say, you know what, nah, Eric Adams, you got to step down. Nah, Eric Adams, you should resign. Nah, Eric Adams should be removed. I don't like that personally, and I, you know, I, and I don't have a dog, and I don't have a dog in the fight either way. I just, you know, I just don't like it. It don't look right. Mm -hmm. Uh, keep that energy. Um, and one last story out of Georgia. A state judge is striking down Georgia's six-week abortion ban. Major news. Uh, this decision allows the procedure to resume, and it makes abortions legal up to 22 weeks of pregnancy. Now, Fulton County Superior Court Judge Robert McBurney issued the order on Monday that says abortions must be regulated the same way they were before the law took effect. Uh, uh, Georgia's abortion law took effect in 2022 after Republican Governor Brian Kemp signed it into law in 2019. So we will continue to watch what's going on and that's your front page news I'm Morgan Wood follow me on social at Morgan Media M-O-R-G-Y-N-M-E-D-I-A and for more news coverage follow at Black Information Network download the free iHeartRadio app and visit BINnews.com thank you Morgan not to my house alright now when we come back Congressman Byron Donalds from Florida will be joining us and we'll talk to him next so don't go anywhere it's The Breakfast Club good morning The Breakfast Club Everybody is DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Jess is on maternity leave, so Lauren LaRose is filling in. We also have our sister Angela Rye with us this morning. The host of the Native Land Morning. Podcast. That's right. And we got a special guest in the building. He's from Brooklyn. Uh, the brother Byron Donalds. Also with the FAMU, too. HBCU. FAMU. There right. you go. All right. 699. But welcome, brother. So how'd you become a... Well, I guess because, you know, in New York is considered a, such a liberal place. How did you become a conservative? Oh, man. Politics came late for me in life. You I was started already, as a Democrat, right? Yeah, I was a registered Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really care about politics. I think a lot of people like that in the country. They just register as whatever family or friends are, not mm -hmm. really thinking about it. My career was finance. So I, I graduated with a degree in finance marketing from Florida State. I had too much fun at FAMU, so I had to transfer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so I transferred to FSU, got my degree there, started in my career, worked in banking, worked in insurance. And then through the financial collapse of 08, my company had international clients. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, we need to get information for our clients so we can keep the investment going. So I started doing the research because I had worked in banking for five years. And when I did the research, one of the last things I did was watch the uh, House Financial Services Committee in Congress. First time I ever watched a congressional committee. And I watched it. And really, for me, it was that the members didn't know what they were talking about. I was like, who are these people? You know, I was 29 at the time, 29, 30. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, who are these guys? They don't know what they're talking about. A lot of stuff doesn't make sense. And so that's really what started having me starting to think about politics. And, you know, the journey kind of went from there. But I got to tell y'all both, my son, he's sitting at home, my son Mason, and he's a huge fan. Oh, so he listens all the time. So I got to give a shout to Mason. Salute to Mason. Salute Thank to you, Mason. Mason. Uh, Congressman, you just mentioned that you attended FAMU, uh, but graduated from Florida State. We know that Donald Trump committed $255 million annually to HBCUs. What obligation does Florida have to properly fund FAMU to ensure rattlers like yourself are properly educated with the resources they deserve? Well, look, I mean, thank you for the question. I think that the disparities you talk about um, between um, some of the, you know, I guess probably more prolific uh, universities in our state like UF and FSU versus FAMU and, and even from some of the uh, the younger universities like UWF, UNF, etc. is something that when I was in the state legislature, we actually talked a lot about. Um, my last year in Tallahassee, there was a project for the student services building. It was about a $25 million contract uh, project 
myself and members on the Democrat side of the aisle, we worked with the leadership in Tallahassee and then Governor DeSantis to make sure that FAMU got the money they needed to build that project out completely. And so that's something specifically I worked on. I think going forward, you know, that is something we got to definitely address. I totally agree with that. So funding that is on par through all universities is important. I do agree. But we also have to address the realities that's pushing every high school student into college with the false reality that a college degree is going to make you successful. It's not going to help them help help them for success long term <clears throat> because they're going to be burdened with the cost of that degree going to the real world and then realize, hold on, wait a minute. I can't get a job with the degree I have. Not all degrees are the same. I believe personally an accounting degree, a finance degree like I have, an engineering degree, a law degree, that has more economic value overall in the economy than a marketing degree, which I also have, or a communications degree, or a, a psychology degree, or a philosophy degree, etc. if you can get into psychology and make that work for yourself. So I think there's multiple layers to college education that we need to address. I want to go back a little bit. So you, you were arrested before for marijuana. Yeah. You're arrested uh, for bank fraud. Yeah. You're also of Caribbean descent. Yeah. Jamaican. Yeah. When you hear Donald Trump talk about some of the other brothers that were arrested and taking out that full ad in the paper, or you hear them talking about Haitian people eating dogs and cats, you still stand by them and what they believe? And if you do, why? Well, a couple of things. Because you're given a second chance. Because like, oh, like, yeah. like we should have, like you should have been. But yeah. you know, why do you still stand by them if you do? Well, I think you also got to acknowledge that when he was president, he also did the First Step Act, which undid a lot of the issues with the '94 Crime Bill that a lot of politicians, including the current president. We're four. He undid that when he was president of the United States. I think second chances are important in, in society. Um, I think everybody's afforded them. You know, what happened with the Central Park Five? Mm -hmm. um, I was probably sixth, seventh grade, eighth grade when that was going down in New York. Yep. I can't really speak to that. But what I also... It was all over the paper. I, oh, I know. It was, all, it was everywhere. You couldn't escape we, we it. We were around it was, the same age, so we seen it everywhere. You, you couldn't in escape it. Mm -hmm. But what I would also add is that in 2000, um, Donald Trump was a member of the Reform Party. Most people don't talk about this. He was a member of the Reform Party. When David Duke joined the Reform Party, he left. And he famously said, I can't be associated with that party because they let David Duke come in. That man is a Klansman. When he bought Mar-a-Lago, he desegregated Mar-a-Lago. At the time when he bought it, only white people were allowed in Mar-a-Lago. He desegregated that. Allowed black people and Jewish people to be a, be a part of Mar-a-Lago. So I think that when you start going down the road of the past, you have to take a man in his totality. I know the man today. And then when you couple that with the economic policies, the energy policies, the foreign policy, we have to acknowledge the reality that in the world today, the United States is in the midst of two conflicts, not directly, but indirectly. We just sent troops over into the Middle East because of the growing conflict uh, with our ally Israel having to essentially secure its, its uh, sovereignty and its protection from Hezbollah and Hamas. Well, when Donald Trump was president, we didn't have to do any of that. So I acknowledge the stuff that you're talking about that happened in the past, but I think you have to take a man on the full record. And when he was president, he did release a lot of black people from prison. He did that. He did try to reform some of the criminal justice system. He did that as well. And so that, that work is just as important as something that might, he might have said back during the Central Park Five. Uh, on this yeah. same point, you talked about taking the man in his totality. Yeah. So do you think Donald Trump should be held accountable for his role in the January 6th insurrection? First of all, I would tell you that everybody's responsible for their own actions. Just like I'm not going to blame friends or blame anybody else for the things I've done wrong in my life. I'm not gonna put that on him. Donald Trump authorized 10,000 National Guard troops. I'm on the oversight committee. He actually authorized 10,000 troops on January 4th, two days before January 6th, obviously. So if you're gonna say that you incited an insurrection, how are you also gonna authorize 10,000 National Guard troops to be at the Capitol? Are you inciting or are you not? Because the record is, he authorized the troops. Nancy Pelosi and Muriel Bowser, the mayor of D.C., did not want the troops at the Capitol. Muriel Bowser signed a letter on January 5th wanting the National Guard troops to be on traffic duty in D.C. Now, here's the funny thing about January 5th, 2021, is that nobody was in D.C. because D.C.'s rules around COVID-19 had the entire city shut down. The streets were empty during this time. So the National Guard that was authorized by Donald Trump were on traffic duty when there was no traffic, when they could have been at the Capitol. That's the history of January 6th. So your question is, well, did he did he incite a riot? Well, I never seen somebody incite so a riot. I, what but I, Angela, what I said, oh, Angela, I make, just, Angela, I, know, I don't want to cut you off. I'm make one point. I'm make one point. But here's here's the main thing, because like, we can actually go past qualified immunity because this is the place where you've refused to answer both on Donald Trump's accountability and on the law enforcement that you love so dearly. Right. What we know is that he's seeking full immunity, like the same immunity he, he now has 
because of the Supreme Court, because of this corruption of the Supreme Court, we have now gone beyond civil presidential immunity to criminal presidential immunity. He would like to give that same immunity to law enforcement. True or false? Well, let's let's expand that a couple true things. True or false? You can't ask true, a true or false, means, Angela, because you got to explain simple, the details. No, see, this is the problem. I don't want you to explain the details because when you explain the details, you don't want people to hear the details, the Angela. The details are what are things that matter. You got to explain like the details, do or then you just talk. You just talking, and then explain. If you, you don't, do that? if you don't explain the details, then you're just talking. Yeah, you don't want to say that because you know that it's not true. So that is not true. You want a true or false statement, Congressman? I want to know. I don't want to argue with you. I want to explain the facts. Angela, I don't want to argue with you. I would I like to, to know if facts. you've ever experienced racism in this country, Congressman. Yeah, actually, I have. Okay. Do you believe America is a racist country? No, I don't. So please tell me how America is not a racist country. Uh, first thing I would say is that our past is a dark one. It really is. We can't we can't walk away from that. Uh, we had whole laws that were subjugating black people in the south of this of this nation for decades after the Civil War. We can't walk away from that one. Um, I believe that in America, we have great people in this country and we have some people, quite frankly, that even I can't stand, but they're the vast, vast, vast minority of people in our country. Most people just want to live in harmony and peace. That's what they that's what they really want. All right, we got more with Congressman Byron Donalds. When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning, morning everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa filling in for Jess. We're still speaking with Congressman Byron Donalds from Florida. Angela Rye. So I- speaking of moving underneath the feet of the parties, you mm-hmm. want to talk about policy. And so I want to yeah. just play quickly what you said about reparations. I don't believe in reparations. I don't. Good, good. Next. Well, then you don't believe in the black community. That's so you don't, you don't believe in reparations? Oh, wow. Why did y'all play the rest of the clip, man? I was on fire during that one. No, because, I, Byron, I think I it's important for people to get your yeas and nays, just like you have to do on the House floor. You have to take an up or down vote on an issue. You took mm. a down vote on this, um, and you haven't supported H.R. 40. So if you want to talk about the complexities of reparations, whether or not there should be a study in this country, you again have said that this country is not racist. And even though it's ha- it has a dark past, it doesn't sound like you think it has a dark present. You have not sponsored uh, that bill. You haven't co-sponsored no. that bill. Why not? Well, a couple things. One, that's why I wish you played the clip because I actually went into very well, you can explain. detail. But I will. <laughs> uh, a couple things is, all right, how many people in the United States today are actually descendants of slave owners? Forget descendants of slaves. Let's, let's hold that to the side. Descendants of slave owners. You've had massive immigration into the United States over the last 150 years. So now you're you're going to say that people who immigrated to the United States who are not descendants of slave owners were not descendants of that trade. Now they're going to be responsible for paying that out going forward. Um, My mother's Jamaican. My father's Panamanian. You have a lot of black people in this country who are not descendants of the American slave trade. So I already know off top, there's a lot of black people in, the, in in America who aren't going to be able to get that kind of benefit or or get reparations. Well, most people who are for reparations, they feel like it should go to what they call foundational black Americans anyway. And, and I agree with that point. I agree <clears throat> with that point. But I'm just saying, I'm just laying out. These are the reasons for why why I'm no. So while I'm so now, you do support reparations for what Lennar just deemed as quote foundational Black Americans? No, 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 I, I, I don't. No. I, but I want to explain okay. that. I want to explain that. And so that's okay. why you have a lot of people saying, okay, well then, what are we going to do? And so my my view is is that what you do going forward is this: why you have to have wholesale changes in economic, uh, medical policy, etc., so that the the ability to access various parts of our economy and grow in our economy work for everybody, including people in our country who are quote unquote foundationally black. Now, let me translate to what's happened in California. So there was a bill in California for reparations. The California Assembly, which is massively Democrat, they didn't move that bill. They could have moved that bill. When they were asked why they weren't moving that bill, they t- they tucked tail and turned and turned and ran away. They didn't even have the, they didn't even have the guts to actually answer that question. So I'm here with y'all. I'll tell you why I'm a no. But you have Democrats who will say they're for something, but when it comes time to actually do it, they're not there for you. They run away. They don't answer the question. Or and to be blunt, like the current vice president, not answering a lot of questions. But she did say that she's for reparations. What do you want black people to have, Byron? I want them to have everything. <laughs> I want them to have access to to everything that this nation can do when it's running right. How do so why, I do yeah, that? why be against the legislation that provides that then? Yeah. Because you have a situation now where the real question is, do you need affirmative action today? Not, mm-hmm. did you need affirmative action? The answer to that is 100% yes. You absolutely needed it. The question is in 2024, in 2028, in 2032, do you need that now? I would argue the thing you need more now is you got to have um, equality 
in terms of the level of academic attainment for young black kids. What a young black kid needs more now than anything today is to be able to read and write, read at grade, at grade level, write at grade level, do math at grade level, and frankly, and beyond. That's what they need today. You know, Bart, I don't disagree with you, but I right. just don't trust white supremacy that much. Yeah, I'm thinking. I feel like you need that right. type of legislation. I feel like you need those guardrails in place to make sure. To protect. To protect, yes, and to make sure those type of things happen. You coming yeah, out of absolutely. Brooklyn, you don't, you don't, like that doesn't register with you? Because you talked about your mom having to move you to a private school. So why now? Like, because right. the kid that had to be moved out of that public school to a private school because yeah. you said that you were being trapped in a failing school. Yeah. You know that those schools, a lot of them are still failing. So oh, why do you, but you, you think that if we get these things and we put these people in place that you are mentioning that all of that would just change? Like, I don't, we know that it doesn't even work that fast, well, let, even if people wanted to. Let me put it this way, because, you know, Charlamagne, you brought the part about you think that you need those to guard against white supremacy well i would argue is it white supremacy to lock kids in failing schools to not give them an option to go to find the academic environment that suits their interests i would argue that it would be white supremacy to basically move millions of people into our country illegally on purpose and have them overwhelm our systems here in new york city the system is overwhelmed you already know like that? that's just a one-party problem though. like i feel like the you know what's been happening at the border has been happening under so many different uh administrations no, so really. has red, redlining no, has too no. redlining is hold not on, just hold a on, one full side stop. thing not not like this not like this under donald trump there were about 2.4 million people that came into the country illegally under joe biden and kamala harris that number is easily 10 million that's what they know of it's probably more like 15 million because it's people it's, that came through the rude. border. It's not even it's not even the same thing. But hold on, I'm gonna make my point. I'm gonna make my point. We talked about financial regulatory policy, access to capital. I would argue it actually upholds the pillars of quote unquote white supremacy to not have free flowing access to capital in the United States. So if you're a black person trying to find a way to raise money for your business, it is harder for you because you just don't even have as many avenues to go to. But the policies I advocate for, the, obvious, the policies that conservatives uh, advocate for, is actually loosening up the ability for kids to find a school of their choice, putting their parents at the head of the line, giving their parents the ability to make that purchasing decision. My mom made a purchase decision for me when it was very hard for her to put the resources together. She was barely making ends meet to do that, but she loved me, did that for me. I think if you're going to fund public education... Fund the parents' ability to make that decision so they can decide where their where their kids go. That's some of the policy, I think, Charlemagne, that gives all families, especially black families, black mothers, black fathers, the ability to have their kids go further in America than anything before. And I don't think that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not against that. I'm just also not against putting something in place that, like, make sure that when that fails, because yeah, it's so many people, right. and it will, it's already doing it right now. You trust white you, people more than we you do. You know that, right. you know what I mean? It's just like, why not have something that comes in and says, okay, this kid from Brooklyn can get to go to that school because that mom didn't get that money. However, that kid is still smart and should be able to go to that school. It's who I don't trust is I don't trust bureaucrats. Mm -hmm. And I don't trust politicians coming in here saying, I'm going to invest blah, blah, blah billions and it's going to do this. Then when you turn around later, there was no investment or the agencies or the administrators don't know what the hell they're doing to invest that money anyway. I'd rather give people those opportunities directly. I'd rather give people those resources directly. I'd rather make sure that the rules are clear and understood by everybody so people can make decisions. Nothing's perfect. I grant you that we are all imperfect people. So the institutions we put up are going to be imperfect. There's going to be failures along the way, but centralizing everything in Washington is an absolute goddamn disaster. What do you say to people that, that, people that sorry, say that look like you? You, yeah. you don't support people that look like you, and that you said that? against. I mean, you, you said racism racism doesn't agree or doesn't. It's not in this country. You talk about a lot of things. So a lot of yeah. people don't feel like that you're actually for the people that you look like. I'm for everybody, man, including the people I look like. Not for everybody. I'm talking I about am. the people that, that you look like. But I'm like, for them too. I'm 100. percent I want people to thrive and succeed. Listen, listen. I came up from nothing. I'm, to be blunt with you, I'm not even supposed to be here. We talked a little bit about my past, the things that I've done wrong, etc. The fact that I'm in this position now really is by the grace of God. So what I want is for people to thrive and succeed. But what I also know, when you're talking about economics, when you're talking about public policy, the reality is you got to have it set up so everybody can thrive and succeed. In that vehicle, black people can thrive and succeed. All right, we got more with Congressman Byron Donalds. When we come back, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. It's DJ NV, Jess Larry, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa is filling in for Jess, and we have Angela Rye with us this morning. We're still kicking in with Congressman Byron Donalds from Florida. Angela. As a black man, how are you not concerned 
with the agenda that is proposed by Project 2025. Uh, to be blunt, I'm not concerned about it because nobody in the Trump campaign or Donald Trump himself is even talking about it. To be blunt with you, Angela, none of us have even read it. So here's the problem, right? I get it. So none is of us is, you're saying that the 25 of the 30 chapters that were written by his former staff and at least 140 people who worked for Donald Trump um, haven't touched it? Or are you now distancing yourself from those people? I'm happy to name names, including Stephen Miller, who I know you're very familiar with, was a very senior yeah. official in the Trump administration. And I know that we're clear about the fact that you guys are not naming it anymore because it's kind of become the boogeyman of this campaign, right? I think I um, might have to start saying F Project 2025, to be honest with you. I really like distance yourself. That's what Donald Trump has done. He's distanced himself every single time. Every time he's asked about it, he goes, I have nothing to do with it. I don't even but know. But Donald Trump isn't here today, Byron. I know. I am, hold you. on now. Let me. Do you fuck with it? You like it? I haven't read it. So okay, this is okay. the thing, Charlemagne. I haven't so even read So I just named what it does. Angela, first of all, with all due respect, I like to read things for myself before. I, that's smart. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's all due respect to you, but I want to read everything for myself before I make a judgment. I will tell you that like the Heritage Foundation, there are think tanks all through Washington. You have the Center for American Progress and all these other think tanks. They all yeah. do a bunch of policy prescriptions. They all do a bunch of programs and projects. I think the UN has something called Project 2030. That's a UN project that's going on right now. What I do know is that Heritage Foundation or any other policy group is not setting policy for Donald Trump. Donald Trump set a policy for Donald Trump. He's so in, are you going to distance charge. yourself from the Heritage Foundation as well, Byron? Are you saying that? Distance myself, you... Angela. I'm not a part of the Heritage Foundation. I haven't read it. So there's not something I'm ascribing to or supporting in it. Nobody right. on the Trump campaign, to my knowledge, including President Trump, hasn't. they have not read it. They're not ascribed to it. There are people who work in presidential administrations on Capitol Hill. They go to think tanks. They write up white papers all the time. That does not mean that what they write up actually becomes law. And so that's the point I'm making. So for Vice President Harris's campaign to be talking so much about Project 2025, which Donald Trump isn't even a part of, has not ascribed to, has not said, this is my plan. When you can go to his website and you see the policies he wants to support. Which is in lockstep when with you Project 2025. No, it is not, Angela. You need to stop now. Or you can read, no, the, or you can read the Republican platform, which Donald Trump actually changed at our convention this year which is the policy sets of our party and what we are ascribing to and what we want to do as a party, I think that's where voters need to go. So uh, if there's he, no Trump, distinction Trump. between Project 2025, the Republican platform, and Donald Trump's campaign platform, how can you distance yourself from Project 2025? I got a, I got a different question. Because Trump, Trump has disavowed Project 2025. But, but, but he did praise the Heritage Foundation a lot for years. Of course, I mean, yeah, we all have praised the Heritage Foundation, but that doesn't mean we agree with that work that Heritage did. But here's my question. What does Kamala Harris actually want to do? Because let's talk about her economic plans that she's come out. I'm going to go through a couple of them. She says she wants to tax unrealized gains. She wants to do price gouging or go after price gouging. Well, how are you going to do that? Because when you do that, what you're actually going to do is put downward pressure on prices in our country. When you do that artificially, what you create is scarcity of product. So what is what that what is that what that means is you're going to have poor people in our country who are going to have less access to goods and services because rich people are going to get their goods and services no matter what. They have the access points. They're going to get them. So you're going to have less product for poor people in our country. She had a thing about she wants to do uh, twenty five thousand dollars for a new home for new first time home buyers. I think that's great. Well, no, it's not because what's going to happen is it's going to increase the cost of housing twenty five thousand dollars. Because if you know every first time home buyer has $25,000 from the government in their back pocket, you as the seller, you're going to be like, oh, wait a minute. Every seller writ large is going to be like, you know what? Well, then I can increase my price to $25,000. It's going to have an upward trajectory shot on housing costs in our country, which is the thing we don't need in America. Th those are three economic policies well, I know are like, not going like, to work. Well, I mean, that sounds like increase, a hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. Why well, would it increase that? If yeah, somebody, yeah, somebody like gets like 25000 from the government to purchase their... Let's say there's 3 million first-time home buyers in the United States of America. They all have an additional $25,000 of purchasing power. You do have a situation where every seller in the country is going to realize, oh, shoot, is this a first-time home buyer? Well, I know you have an additional twenty-five. When you provide that type of stimulus into an economy, what you end up doing is you increase prices uh, in whatever that that uh whatever that economy is. She says she wants to build three million new homes. How are you going to do that? Let me let me explain why. Environmental policy, both at the federal and state level, makes it much harder to build housing. Whether you believe in in, in climate change or not, mm -hmm. weather rising, energy efficiency, all of those regulations have, has made it more expensive to build housing. If the federal government says, okay, now we're going to go for 3 million new homes. Okay, well, how's that going to work? Are you going to change the regulatory burden for building those new homes? 
Are you not going to have a disjointed regulatory burden between the federal house and one built in the private sector? That, that's not smart. You can't do that. So if you're not going to change the regulation, you're just going to pump more money into the system. What you're going to do is you're going to push up the cost for the materials to build housing, which is going to make it more expensive, not less expensive. And so if you take advantage of the home that Kamala built for you, great for you. But for the entire economy writ large, it's not going to be good because the cost of housing is going to go up on everybody. All right. Well. I got one real quick. Mm -hmm. Just J.D. Vance, where are you at? Like, how do you feel about where he is now and where he's taking the party to? Because you was you were in the running for VP at one point. Yeah, that was I crazy. know you said on Twitter yeah. that day when they announced it, wasn't you? No, 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 no. It was good. You know, I told President Trump, I was like, man, whatever you do is whatever you do. But J.D., I think J.D.'s hit his stride and I think it's going to be a really important debate. Uh, for the country to start hearing about all these different policies in detail, uh, the way Angela and I are going back through policy, I think that's important. Well, Angela, but I think JD's doing good. You know, no, but again, not. victory is what matters. He's not doing. Good. He's actually terrible. He's you, actually he's he's, he's, he's come very much. Come on, Charlotte. Come he, on, Charlotte. He's, he's actually done so much more damage to that to that ticket. I, I, he should have made Nikki Haley the yeah. VP. Cat, you heard uh, Cat uh, Lady uh, and uh, said, he, "Yo, he's in his stride." He's right terrible. Now? Uh, the Cat Lady thing. I mean, I don't agree with that, man. I he's think, just I don't agree. I don't agree with that. The Haitian cats that came from him too. Cats and dogs. Yeah, I don't agree with that either. I just don't. And I, I'm serious about that. Let me tell you something. I'm serious about that. I, that's the one thing I, one thing I do, one of the things I respect about Republicans is that. They uh, ride with each other. They ride with each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bro, that's, right. how we feel about, that's how we feel about Democrats, yeah. man. They no, don't no, never no, feel no, like no, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. They That's because Eric came at them. Oh, I don't know. About that, I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't know what happened in the Eric situation. They were riding with Joe Biden until he realized that you know he wasn't with us. And the second they realized he wasn't with us, let's be real about this. Joe Biden was the nominee. If that debate in Atlanta two weeks ago didn't happen, or, or two months ago didn't happen, we'd be talking about Donald Trump, Joe Biden. The only reason that they got rid of Joe Biden is because his poll numbers were cratering, and not just for him, for Senate Democrat Republican, for Senate Democrats, and for and for House Democrats. And when they looked at their numbers dropping. And that's when they were like, man, show the old dude the door. We, well, we got to move on. Well, I'm glad they made the right decision. And I wish somebody in the Republican Party would do the same because y'all can do much better than uh, Donald J. Trump. Now nah, we're going to be good, man. We're going to make America great again. Don't worry yeah. about it. All right. Oh, Lord. Well, it's Congress. <laughs> it's a white year. It's Congressman Byron Donalds. We appreciate you for joining man, us, bro. appreciate y'all, man. It's the Breakfast Back to Club. Back Jim Crow. Oh, come on. <laughs> Stop. Hey. See, there you go. Morning, everybody. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Just with the Mess with Lauren LaRosa. News is real. Weather is real. Glorious Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Don't spare nobody. Just don't spare nobody. Just don't spare nobody. Just don't spare nobody. Just don't spare on the Breakfast Club. She's a coach with Lauren, Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the men. Talk, talk to me. So Dikembe Mutombo, uh, legend, uh, sadly passed away yesterday of brain cancer at age 58. Adam Silver actually released a statement. And in that statement, he made highlights about how Dikembe was simply larger than life on the court. He was one of the greatest shot blockers and uh, defensive players in the history of the NBA. That's right. Uh, he says off the floor, he poured his heart and soul into helping others. Mm -hmm. um, some of his stats, Dikembe played from uh, 91 until 2009. He played for the Denver Nuggets, Atlanta Hawks, the 76ers, the Nets, uh, New York Knicks, Houston Rockets. Um Eight times All-Star, four times winner of the NBA Defensive Player of the Year Award, two-time rebound leader, six-time All-Defensive Team, three-time uh, blocks leader. Mm -hmm. um, he also dedicated his life to things outside of the NBA. He was really big on helping his home country, um, uh, and he created a foundation in 1997. Within this foundation, he opened up a hospital and a school through the charity, and he also served as the first global ambassador for the NBA. That's right. Yeah, rest so sending a resting peace to him as mm -hmm. well. Um, I did mention that he passed away of brain, uh, brain, brain cancer. cancer yeah. Okay, alrighty. Now, uh, next up, we have Diddy in conversation again. So this time, you know, just a, a quick update. You know that Diddy keeps being told he has to stay locked up mm -hmm. until he goes to court. No he, bail. No bail. He's due back in court on October 9th. So yesterday, Diddy's team filed... Um, a notice and some documents asking for a third attempt at trying to get bail. Mm -hmm. This time around, though, uh, worth mentioning, Diddy has brought on two new lawyers. One of the lawyers, his name is Anthony Rico, also known as Tony. He is known as one of the finest trial lawyers in the country. That's how he's told it. Alexandra Shapiro, she is not related to Robert Shapiro, the okay. famous attorney, uh, but she is known as one of the best appellate lawyers Appellate lawyers, I'm sorry, uh, practicing today. Now, Anthony has successfully represented an NYPD officer uh, charged with killing an unarmed man. I don't know who this man is, but this is what New York Post 
like this is like the tagline for him mm -hmm. um, on New York Post. And then Alexandra, she is currently working right now on the Bankman uh, Freed's appeal. That's the the co the founder of the crypto uh, FTX stuff that got uh, locked up for fraud. That's his bunkie. That's his yeah. uh, roommate, right? Well. I don't know if that's confirmed. There were reports that they were. That's what they were saying. Yeah, it was yeah. Um, now background on this: we remember Diddy was arrested September 16th. So it, this has all been coming since then. This was six months. September 16th, the arrest was six months after the agents, the federal agents, ran into his homes in LA and Miami, and he was charged with sex, tra sex trafficking, racketeering, conspiracy, and transportation to engage in prostitution, which he is pleading not guilty to. And we mm. are being told that he is going to stand ten toes down on. He does not want to take a plea, and he plans to testify for himself. Now, another court news. Y'all don't got nothing to say on Diddy today? Y'all let him rock today. Uh, that's that's like say. We say the same thing over and over. Exactly. And wasn't nothing funny in there. Mm -mm. I didn't hear no... Uh, I mean, I could... I could have did something with the bunky thing, but I, you know, so yeah, it's okay. My teeth. <laughs> we, we, we can we can move you know, on. Okay. Um, now, in other news, uh, YSL, uh, the YSL Rico, y'all seen that yesterday? Yep. Yes, was back in court yesterday. Now, this case has had so many twist turns, up and downs. Why I don't is it not a mistrial yet? I don't understand why. I, what, what, what's going on? I went to judge. She about to. How, how is about it not to a mistrial? mistrial she pissed off. I don't know, but so basically, uh, what happened yesterday? Um, Judge Paige Reese Whitaker, who is one of multiple different judges, because they've had to interchange judges, mm -hmm. she got so upset at the district attorney. The district attorney's name is Adrian Love. Let's take a listen to the judge. It is baffling to me that somebody with the number of years of experience that you have, time after time mm -hmm. after time, continues to seemingly purposefully hide the ball to the extent you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. And I really don't want to believe that it is purposeful, but honestly, after a certain number of times, you start to wonder how it could be anything but that, unless it is just that you are so unorganized that you are throwing this case together as you try it. And I am sorry to say that, but this case is being made much more difficult for everybody. Now, let me tell y'all, this case right now, uh, Thug's case is known as one of the longest trials in state history. That is I thought it was the longest. It's not the longest? Yeah, that's oh, okay. what I mean. I'm sorry. The longest trial in state history right as of right now. Um, so what happened after this was because so first of all let's back up so mm -hmm. she got upset because um, the district attorney tried to enter hearsay evidence via a witness now you know anytime any evidence is entered into a courtroom it has to be a discussion discovery has to happen both right. sides are supposed to know what's going on hearsay is always hard to bring into a courtroom they're they acting like Twitter it. They Basically. literally acting no, like that's social media. That's yeah, exactly they literally acting like social media. Hearsay, yes. rumors, gossip. This person said this. This person said that. I believe this happened. I saw this on YouTube. Like, what's yeah. going on, yo? Right. So that's why the judge got so upset. Um, Thug's lawyer was like, you know what? Mistrial. Right now. Right now. Yep. The judge denied the mistrial. The judge denied the mistrial. She said that she was denying it because she didn't believe the DA actually was trying to get a mistrial. She's just because she doesn't believe the DA wants to retry the case again the judge is saying she hopes that this is just poor lawyering I don't know why the, they're getting so much grace in this yeah, this is crazy um, that's what I don't understand like social media knows every damn thing right everybody be an e-lawyer on social media mm -hmm. you know you got all these cyber counselors but can't nobody tell me why this is not a mistrial so what is this then because this, this isn't normal no yeah. idea so and what is this at this point and there's no end date. Like right now, it's like we don't even know when this is going to end. Like it's just going to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going. But and I, the fact that they wouldn't, they, they can't, they're not even going to grant uh, Jeffrey a bond. Nope. Thug, yeah, like Thug, Thug should have been had a bond. Like why should he have to deal with all of this for the last? Well, it's been two years, right? Two years. It's been a long time. Yeah, he was. Um, so Young Thug was arrested in May of 2022 on these charges. Yeah, two so, and a half years. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, if, they, like, if they haven't built the case by now, it clearly tells me they don't have one. Well, they're trying as but it's going on now. you can't build the case as you go along. That's what the judge just said. Judge said, how you building the case as we going on? Yeah, I don't know. And understand. it's the third judge, by the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's been different judges. It's been, remember, his attorney was like, I'll stay in jail with my client. It, this is literally, people making documentaries, they need to do this one. because yeah, this, it, it, this, this needs to be a documentary. Yeah, this right here has been a case to watch. It's, uh, it's every single day on Twitter, it's something new. Mm-hmm. So that's it for the hour. So much court. Right. Everybody's in court. Well, that was Jess with the mess with Laura Rosa. Charlemagne! Yes, sir. Who are you giving that down to? Man, there's a man named Jesse Michael Johnson. He needs to come to the front of the congregation. We would like to have a word with him. Uh, he practices what we call voyeurism. 
Jesse Michael Johnson. Yes, Jesse Johnson. Michael Johnson. Mm. Guess what? All right, we'll get Not to it next. You got it's, early on all right, it. Nah, all right, we'll get to it next at the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Some donkey today just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlotte, man. I was ready for it. <laughs> I never heard old donkey the other day. What is it? I'm a donkey. Say it again, Charlemagne. I'm a donkey. Yes. You are a donkey. I'll show you how to act a donkey. Everything that Charlemagne is saying is true. <clears throat> ah, donkey today. For Tuesday, October 1st, goes to an Arizona man named Jesse Michael Johnson. Now, Jesse is 28 years old, and he was accused on uh, three counts of voyeurism and three counts of disorderly conduct. Now, what is voyeurism? For those who don't care to use ChatGPT or Google, voyeurism is the practice of gaining sexual pleasure from watching others when they are naked or engaged in sexual activity. Well, old Jesse was arrested after allegedly crawling under several women's cars for his sexual gratification. You heard what I said. This man, Jesse, was allegedly caught via camera surveillance at a superstar car wash in Arizona, hiding under women's cars so he can get a little peek. Let's go to Fox 10 for the report, please. Court documents allege 28-year-old Jesse Johnson of Chandler was seen crawling under three women's cars at the superstar car wash in Gilbert, where police say he would hide out there for several minutes, looking at and possibly recording their feet. It's something Johnson has been arrested for before in Nebraska in 2016 and 2017. Johnson told law enforcement at that time that he's sexually attracted to women's feet and that he sometimes cannot control his sexual desires regarding this. On August 29th, employees at that superstar car wash at Emmett and Riggs Roads, they say Johnson got his car washed three times that day and he would park <laughs> next to women who were vacuuming their SUVs. And through surveillance video and working with Gilbert police, the employees had a partial plate and they were able to keep a lookout when Johnson came back and that's how police were eventually able to track him down and arrest him. Yep, that's me, Jesse Johnson. You're probably wondering how I got here. By here, I mean jail. <laughs> See, I've told you all a million times, destiny is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. And some people on this planet are just hornier than others. And it's that type of horniness that leads to things like freak-offs or leads to things like Jesse jerking under a Jaguar. Okay, masturbating under a Mazda, making Pearl Jam under a Prius. All right, I just don't understand. As an able penis 28-year-old man, why do you resort to this? I remember the first time I masturbated. Okay, I felt terrible. I felt terrible. I thought it was something I wasn't supposed to be doing. And I thought it was something that losers did because they couldn't get no poom poom. And you cried. I, I, stop. I don't need to put that part of the story. I just want to make but sure yes, it was clear did, that you I, cried. Is that a cry. public knowledge thing that yes, people knew that? Oh, I've I thought that was just like before. something. Okay, personally. Yes, he cried. Okay, he cried each other. like a little baby cried. Like, ah, yes. I masturbated. Poo. And then I used the tears for. Okay. But listen, what? I was just telling you my feelings at the time. Okay. But I was also a teenager. Lo and behold, I was wrong. It is absolutely perfectly okay to season your own meatloaf. But what is actual loser behavior is what Jesse Michael Johnson was doing. Like, rock bottom wasn't low enough for this man. He was playing his own game of limbo, and it led him to go so low that he ended up under women's cars. I just don't understand how in 2024, one ends up underneath a Range Rover creating tartar sauce rainbows. Okay, there is literally nothing you can't find online. Pornhub literally has a voyeurism category. You know how I know? Because I went to look for research purposes only. So I don't understand humans like Jesse Michael Johnson who has a history of sex crimes. By the way, he told authorities in Arizona, as you just heard, that he is sexually attracted to women's feet and could not control his sexual desires. Once again, there is a category for that on Pornhub. You know how I know? Because I looked for research purposes only. But there is a whole feet porn category on Pornhub. Envy got an OnlyFans with his feet up there. Okay? Google it. That's not authorized, though. That's you. They, whatever. That's you. I'm okay? about to Google that. It's, he, he does. I, I do. You don't have to take penitentiary chances for your kinks anymore. Okay? What's interesting about this story is according to the surveillance footage is after he would get a peek, he would go back and pretend to clean his tires. I know what you're thinking. What the hell was he using to clean his tires? And was he using the same lubricant to butter his muffin and clean his tires? Okay? Wait. This man has more sexual history. In June of 2016, he was cited four times in Nebraska for allegedly hiding under cars and grabbing people's ankles. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they're going to do to you in prison, Jesse, except they're not going to be under your car. They're going to pull up to your bumper. Okay, oil up your ankles and make your Tim's tap, Jesse. I don't know what to say other than I wish he would have got, you know, ran over while he was under those cars. And clearly something is off with this man, but truly it's not women's feet he's attracted to. It's not voyeurism. I think this man is attracted to the undercarriage of cars. 
I believe this man's true calling is to be a mechanic. Okay, looking at that undercarriage, it just does something to him. Okay, it's where the magic happens, don't it, Jesse? You've given a whole new meaning to the term splash shield. Okay, splash shield usually protects the engine from dirt and water. You know, the usual stuff you'd expect under a car, but nope. Jesse is adding skeet to that equation. Okay, he's using the splash shield as his own privacy curtain. All right, Jesse, the splash shield is doing his job by keeping things clean under the hood. Maybe you should take a hint, okay, and clean up your act. Please give Jesse Michael Johnson, heavy on the Johnson, the biggest hee-haw. Strange world we live in, y'all. That is correct. I That all me fans that you looked up is not mine. What'd you not see, Lauren? Did you find his page? I, no, I didn't find a page. I was just good. <laughs> you saw MV Feet? No, the first thing that popped up was somebody on YouTube. They they talking about DJ Envy. <laughs> said, DJ Envy, scamming question mark. Only fans. First date tips. That was the first thing that popped up. Yeah, somebody made an OnlyFans mm -hmm. of my feet. It's not mine. I don't get that. That's definitely It's not me. That is so definitely So I'll get new pictures then. It's not, it's, it's pictures. Is it still active? Yes. I don't know. It wouldn't come up. I, I didn't see can it. Can we go play again? No. Now you want to play a game. You don't want to play a game? You want to play on OnlyFans. I don't think no game after talking about your damn feet. You don't want to play on OnlyFans. Johnson. <laughs> you are disgusting. <laughs> I'm going to HR right now. I can't take this anymore. I've had enough, y'all. Okay. Did y'all just hear that? Uh, I'm the only person that heard it's that. It's Jesse Johnson. Right, he asked me to play with his feet. And I'm not playing with your feet. I'm not talking about my feet. I'm talking about my Johnson. I'm going to HR today. And his okay, for holidays, I need another check. He didn't say you're Johnson. He said Johnson. Nope. Well, Nick, Red, y'all coming with me? <laughs> y'all in the room, too? Y'all coming with me? Okay. All right. Let's go get paid. Heavy. You know All right? what? What is going on? Let's go get paid. Thank you for the donkey today. When we come back, Donnell Rollins will be joining us. Ashley Larry will be here. We're going to talk to him next. And don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Jess is on maternity leave. Lon LaRosa filling in for Jess. We have a special guest that hasn't sit down and just walking around. He's Yo, have you seen? Look, You're have you seen yourself? If y'all think... We're just showing him his picture on the wall. I'm here to play with y'all today. <laughs> well, God damn it, I'm not. Let me show you. I don't want to see sh They gave us questions. No, <laughs> you don't have questions. I got a gift. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> Did I you got one, Wesley. Oh, my okay, God. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. Oh, this one is special. I like that this one. This one's yours. Look, read it. Read it. So where'd you get this from? Because this says, see you at the car show, Who dot, 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 Diddy. The streets told me, the streets told me that baby oil is how Ashy Larry became not right. Ashy. Mm -mm. Y'all are slippery. As Ashy Larry, did you ever use baby oil instead of lotion? How many bottles this, did you, how many bottles This you is have? a weekend supply for you guys. The oh, 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 These oh. are old. What what Donnell Rollins. You see this picture? Oh, and Don, just, Donnell, no, wait, wait, Donnell wait, wait, in between wait, Diddy wait, legs wait, on a yacht. Listen, no, no. Listen. That was daytime. Listen. Wow. That was show. daytime. Let me see. That was before Donnell, 12 midnight. In between that was Diddy's before legs. 12 midnight. He's in between Diddy's wow. legs on a yacht. You think he got all of that baby oil? Cause you didn't buy it. Okay, let me explain. You didn't buy that let baby oil. Let that me explain. So that's when you got this baby oil. You didn't buy that baby oil. Let me explain. That was a day party. Right. That wasn't no day party. Was this was, was in the gift bags no, on Diddy's yacht. That was a day party. I got the history behind that. That was a day party. Okay. And I'm not. First off, it's a very interesting situation to even bring this up. Right, and I will tell y'all, and everybody knows, and I know I'll be criticized for this. Yes, and you know, Diddy throw some of the best parties you ever go but to. You ain't gotta be between his legs. But listen, you, 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 you know, you, you gotta legs. know. I was between his legs. R. Kelly flew you in. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait! Oh, no, get it close. Oh, get it close oh, up. Yo, you been trafficked. Oh, you been trafficked. Oh, son. Oh, oh, so you oh, trafficked. Oh, oh, you Traffic. Oh, you victim oh, blaming. Victim blaming. Oh, All right. I went to a dinner blaming. party. Did you get traffic or not? I'm victim blaming. Have you been groomed since Desert Storm? <laughs> are you, are you, have you been groomed? You're victim Let blaming. Ask the question. I got a question. Let's let's show. Show. I have a question. Who said I I'm presenting all evidence. My question. Whose lap was better, Diddy's or Wendy's? I don't know what you're talking about. Wow. You did sit on Wendy's with that. Charlamagne, you did sit on Wendy's lap. Don't, whoa, 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 whoa. You trying to, you trying to, you trying to skip the subject. What? <laughs> did you, okay, what is the definition of trafficking? Can you, what is the definition? When somebody flies you out or puts you on a boat. With the, <laughs> so, <laughs> so both of y'all, both of y'all was trafficked. With the intention of what? 
Sex. Okay, I don't know if that's the case with you. No, you got flued. Yeah, we were doing a mixtape. And what? Did, did did you ever see him? No. Did he have you in a special room? Yeah, I, did he have I, I had a hotel. No, no, nothing like did that. Did you no. ever see him? No. So you <laughs> you are a victim. I'm not a tra- victim. You got traffic. I he they flew me out to do a mixtape. They said you got traffic so much you like a crossing guard now, son. <laughs> Yo, that's what I'm saying. How you get, what song was playing? Yeah, when he, what song was playing I, when you was waiting in the room for him? I, I like no. He flew, flew me out to do it. We do a Don't say flew. Flued. No, he didn't flew. Flued. You know what flew means. We were doing means. a mixtape. Bong, bong, bong. You know no, what flew me. <laughs> he was mixing it up. Did you complete the mixtape? No, I did not. But question, was you sitting in between Diddy's legs before I the picture slipped. was took? I slipped. Or did you pose for that? I picture? slipped. He so posed. You were it smiling. Was like, his hands up, he's smiling. All right, let yeah. me explain. You slipped and you let were smiling. Explain. You were here. That was a trip in St. Martin, St. Bart, some years ago. Mm-hmm. And he does a holiday party every year. You were there. And I was there. I was there with a lot, with a lot of other people. And it wasn't oh, now the, you want to snitch on other people? Oh, yeah. It was it was Dave. <laughs> <laughs> right. this pit, hey, this picture hey, crazy. Hey, hey, I'm snitching. Hey, Y'all hey, Yo, it ain't just me. I don't know. Russell Simmons? <laughs> yo, 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 yo. It's the whole, it's a whole body squad. Right? So, no, it wasn't no snitch. This is what you got to understand. You got this party, you got that mm-hmm. party. And that party was a great party. My son was my son was on that yacht with me. We had a great time. So I understand, like, now, if you say you went to any party, you just assume it was the freak off. That's what, that it wasn't the case. And we had a good time. You never got invited to the freak off? I will say, I don't know what was in that vodka, because it felt like I had a whole full of hair, to, hair on that yacht. I don't know. It was something special in that vodka. I was, I felt light skin for a second. So that's why he I sat between like his legs. No, I didn't. <laughs> so he started like rubbing the no, fake no, no, hair. No, 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 no. I didn't sit. Yo, he was braiding your fake hair. I Yo, Donna, no. you felt like you had hair, so you saw me no, sit no. between okay, his okay, legs. This, this is his knee, right? <laughs> we saw, you are leaning in on his ankles. Oh, his two man. knees. Wow. These are his two knees. It's one knee right there. You talking about? Now you don't recognize that ain't me. So Diddy was pretending to braid your hair. This is okay. So these are the knees. These that's are Wayne Brady. That ain't me. That's somebody else. That is not me. I don't hands, know on, somebody. hands on somebody else's knees. But I'm crazy. just saying. Okay, we can assume that every party he had is not a free party. And I will say that event was dope, and I had a good time. And I'm not going to say free Diddy or anything, but that's all you got to say. All you, <laughs> you got to say free is Diddy. I had I a great free. time. <laughs> what, this is what you're doing. This is not mean, the conversation. I, this not, don't, 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 don't do this. We are friends, don't and I stand by that, my friend. Not, if you had a great time, I'm not judging you. I didn't His say lawyer I said, said some stuff was consensual, and then you, know, I'm, we ain't oh, judging. Wow. wow. Hey, did you, and you know what? Did you take your brother though? You know what my brother said? I will say my brother called me. He said I'm mad at you. He, no, he didn't say. I mean, he said I'm mad at you. Right. <laughs> 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 and when he talked like that, you got to talk say? to him back like that. He said, I'm mad at you. I said, what you mad at me for? Right? <laughs> he said, why you ain't... T-? This is what my brother said. Yeah. He said, why you ain't tell me about the Diddy party? He said, I would have signed the paper and I would have brought my own oil. Damn. That's what my brother said. Damn. He's about that life. Damn. He's about that life. And he said he want to flu you too, Evie. <laughs> he want to flu you? <laughs> since you getting flued. Evie, you hot out here in Yo, the streets. Since oh, you getting flued. Oh, my god. Why we can't talk about that? I want to talk about you and Dr. Uma. You had Dr. Uma on your podcast. I did have it. It was a great interview. And he t- he tried to do an intervention with you. Cause no, you, doctor, you love first off, snow not, bunnies. First you off, love snow bunnies? First off, on Easter, I've been known to hop. <laughs> 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 I'll just tell you. I tell only you, on Easter. yo, yo, only, only on Easter. I, I've, in only cases, uh, uh, I've been known to hop on Easter. Uh, but Dr. Umar did do my uh, podcast, and it was good. In, it was a good interview, but it was a conversation. Did he have an interview with you? Huh? He didn't have an interview. And okay. this is what every interview, every platform, and this is what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a sense of humor. Yep. But you didn't know if Dr. Umar has a sense of humor. He's one of the most funny people funny alive. Yeah, funny. I, all I see him is this part of his face being wrinkled up and yelling at somebody, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pan African American. What is it? Pan Africanism. Uh, happy Pan Africanism. Yes. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, what? man. Tomato, tomato, okay, man. Okay, I got you, got you. But um, I did have a conversation where I was like, do he ever laugh? And the first thing when he, now you could go, and if, and if you subscribe to my YouTube page, The Donnell Rollins Show, it comes out this week. But I had a very good conversation with him. Because I said, every time you see him, it's always being angry. Mm-hmm. How, why can't you create dialogue 
with people that you don't necessarily agree with mm -hmm. or disagree with without being upset. I agree. And we had a great conversation. Uh, it was a great conversation. It's going to be on my um, my show, the Donnell Rollins show on YouTube. Okay. That you don't subscribe to. So Do you subscribe to? Yeah. No, you, you don't. don't. You're lying. Put your phone up. All right. Just so, see, this is what you want to do. Go to the Donnell Rollins, Donnell Rollins show and oh, subscribe. This is, see, this is a different one. I would subscribe to this one. Yeah, do that. Yeah. All right, we got more with Donnell Rollins. When we come back, don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking it with Donnell Rawlings. Charlamagne? It's been seven months since your Netflix special. Now that some time has passed, yeah. has it changed your career at all? I don't think it's changed my career, but I do mm -hmm. think that it's, it um, gave people an opportunity that wasn't familiar with me as a stand-up comedian to see that I'm a good stand-up. Okay. And you never know. It's like, it's hit or miss with that. Some of those specials, it may be something that it pops, and next thing you know, you are, you're a household name or you're being introduced to it. But it's hard. I, I'm, I noticed the difference in my, um, my ticket sales. Also, know when I go around, people, uh, you know, show me a lot of love and say, I really appreciate it. Or uh, when you're going to do, do the next one. But it, what, if it, it was something that just said to my career. But, and I tell people, even before the special drop, I was in a good place with selling tickets, uh, people being familiar with me as a, what do you want to say, actor, comedian. So it was another little notch on the belt. And I'm, I'm already working material if I had that situation again to do another one. I did learn a lot. By, and that's special People always say Well I seen them being funnier I saw so and so But in that moment That day In that moment I thought I was the best That I could be I thought it was I thought it was pretty funny Did you see some of the reviews That were out there? Um, no Because I, I see like uh, For instance Rotten Rotten Tomato gave you Three tomatoes right? And three somebody, out of what? Three tomatoes like three or three out of tomatoes? Nine or ten, right? three, yeah three out of uh no, three out of five, actually. Three stars right. out of five. That's not bad. That's it's average. It, I mean, you know, I don't go by that. Guess who Guess who Rotten I, Tomatoes? No, I just want to say this. Rotten Tomatoes gave Tyler Perry's last movie horrible reviews, but guess what it did in the box office? And guess what it did for the people that know him? So, you know, I could take that with a grain of salt, but I'm here for it. Yeah, somebody, they said, uh, Ash Larry well, somebody, cannot do stand-up. His jokes are probably taken from AI chat box with bad with instructions. You. I laughed barely once. You don't let him talk to you like that. But, mm. no, but, 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 see, I was just saying, I loved it. I, I thought it was great, actually. No, continue. What other comments? That's what somebody, somebody said that it might not win any awards or hit top 10. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, and this is how I know you fully <laughs> I so I say, okay, so my, okay, here's the thing. What's wrong with that? that? My special charted for three weeks on Netflix. Also, not that I won anything, but the special... And this might not mean anything to anybody else, but it made the nomination ballot for an Emmy this year. So next year. Yeah. It didn't win, but the fact that here's the thing, people like this, you're not gonna win. It didn't make to the next joint. In this business, first thing you wanna do is be in a conversation with other people. If I could be in that conversation, that means somebody else is introduced to me and I can move on to it. Next question. Um, Donnell too white, that's a thing people say that to you. Too white? Yeah. You know what? I've heard that, and I'll tell you for why. Real? I'll tell you this is the reason why. In this business. When we first started, especially Def Comedy Jam Circuit, right? We did not have a lot of outlets to showcase your stuff. Mm -hmm. So we had to create rooms. Terminal D, the Manhattan Propers, mm -hmm. uh, um, the other club in Jersey. We had to make our own black pocket of comedy. We didn't wait for white people to say, oh, you come in here. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of comics in my era got labeled as a Def Jam act. Just completely Def Jam. If you did Def Jam, it was hard to get booked in mainstream rooms. Could be like this. Oh, he's a Def Jam act. He's gonna be doing, doing. He's only gonna be talking about this. Mm -hmm. But I've been lucky enough that when I started, I realized that I need to do the Chitlin Circuit. I need to do the Black Circuit. But I always was interested in doing mainstream and doing other stuff than just for Black people. Mm -hmm. And once in my community, once a comedian does that, and he has. The crossover ability, I didn't say sellout, mm -hmm. crossover ability, they assume that you are a white comic. They assume that, because I have relationships with Joe Rogan and Burt Kreischer and those people from there, they assume that. But anybody <laughs> that come to my show, you go to my show, you can't tell where my base is. Yeah. When you go to my show, you'll see black, you'll see white, you'll see Asian, you'll see handicapped, you'll see he, she, days, and thems. And, I, and, and I've been able to do that. And part of that is because I'm sure of it, my association with Dave Chappelle, if you go to a Dave Chappelle concert or a show, it's a mixed group of people. But mm -hmm. People don't I remember know. Dave was, everybody thought he was the white comic until Chappelle's well, show. I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, there's no discredit, discredit. I was like, Dave, he was ahead of everybody. Mm -hmm. When he started with a Robin Hood Men in Tights, whatever, right? He was like the, the chosen one. Mm -hmm. Whoopi Goldberg, Mel Brooks, he was a fan. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, the black community, they didn't know him like nah, that. Nah, not touch your But the show. college community, 
like the NACA and everything, he was one of the biggest names on the college circuit, right? And Killing Me Softly was so big. Kill, Killing yeah. Me Softly. But really what broke him, and, you know, it's a credit to the team that he put together. I would honestly say the Chappelle show is really what gave him street creds when everybody mm -hmm. saw that he was a beast. Yeah. And you got talent that go through that. Uh, Chris Chris Rock example. When Chris Rock was on SNL, he, I think he felt kind of similar to where I feel like, wait a minute, man, I'm black. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes, I appeal to these white people mainstream, but I need to, that's why one of Chris Rock's biggest specials was bigger and blacker. Black and the reason why he has something to prove. Mm -hmm. That's why he chose to put it at the um at the um at the Apollo. Mm -hmm. That's why he chose to come and let y'all know I can do this for white people, but I don't care how crossover you are as a black comedian, nothing's gonna ever make you feel as good as being able to entertain your own people, shared likes. The stuff that resonates, the stuff that you talk about growing up, but it's also something to be said that you can cross over. I saw uh, Teddy Swims. Ha! He was happy. Lose control when I'm not next to you. I love that song. He saw you singing about Diddy. Uh, something got, ain't nobody singing about Diddy. I said this. Something got a control on me lately, and I don't know myself anymore. Feels like the world is all closing oh, in. Oh, don't you do that. And the don't devil is knocking. <laughs> Wait, don't you do that. How? <laughs> 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 in my mind, how many times <laughs> did I tell you? <laughs> I don't give a f about my last time up here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Swifty still? Yo, yo. But hold on, Teddy said, Teddy said that was a top five yeah. moment yeah. of his life. Was what? You singing that song on stage. You didn't see that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he did. Yes. I want to say he slid in my DM, but he communicated he for me with somebody. But it was good. I liked the song. The funny thing about it, a black guy singing, uh, being a fan of Teddy Swim, and most black people don't swim, so that's mm -hmm. very ironic. But I like his music. It's very passionate. And if you listen to that album, I think that I, I might need therapy. I forget the name of it. But it was, that album reminded me of, it put me... Um, in the mindset of when Usher did Confessions, mm. when Anthony Hamilton did like his joint, somebody that's actually going mm -hmm. through it in their mm -hmm. life, and it resonates through their music. He's a dope artist. I think that that album only came out like last year. I've Very tried dope. everything but therapy. Yep, and I know you're like that because you're on that therapy. That's perfect. Like, yeah, you like, like a lot of those songs. You'll be like, just oh my god, this is my life. Let's the talk about your know. tour dates, Donna. Yeah, I got October the fourth. I'm be at NJ Pack Victoria Theater, New, New, New York, Jersey. New yeah, York. and then um. October the uh, October. 10th and 12th Improv, Illinois. 10th Improv. I, I got a, a whole bunch of dates. If you Improv, go to, Texas at yeah. the weekend after. Yeah, if you go to DonnellRawlins.com, it's all my dates. I get, I'm booked up until 2025. And I will say this because oh, the question right. is always, all right, he just did a special. Will it be any new jokes? The, when, the, the minute, the day that my special dropped, I was already 35 minutes into a new set. So if you come mm -hmm. see my show, um, you're not going to get any repeat jokes and it's going to be, it's, it's going to be fine. And I'm, I'm, I'm on it. Make sure y'all go to DonnellRollins.com for all his tour Subscri dates, man. Subscribe to the Donnell Rollins Show. It's a new podcast. It's a reality show about a podcast. October 4th, I'm at NJ Pack, the Victoria Secret. Secret. Victoria, Victoria Theater. Victoria God damn. What the hell? <laughs> what more do you want from me? <laughs> Goodbye, Donnell. Peace. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Jordan Atuni, did I say that name right? He's going to be performing at Powerhouse NYC at the Prudential Center. Come on down to New York if you're in the area. Catch a flight. It's going to be him. It's going to be Gunner, Sexy Red, A Boogie, just to name a few. Boss Mandilo as well. Powerhouse NYC. Now, let's get to Just With The Mess with Lauren LaRosa. News is real, weather is real. Lauren is Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't nobody. Worldwide Jess, Worldwide Mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. With Lauren, Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk, talk to me. So Cardi B went live. She said she was, uh, you know, just relaxing until she got on her flight from Paris back over here into the States. And she wanted to talk a little bit about when she found out she was pregnant with her, with their most recent uh, baby girl. Let's take a listen to Cardi. I woke up one morning and my mouth tasted like copper. So I was like, oh my gosh, this only happened to me when I'm pregnant. Me and my baby dad, we were in very bad terms. I still called them to and I was like, hey, I'm pregnant. And we kind of laughed about it because it's like, what the f***? That's so random. I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm like, right, I'm like six weeks pregnant, probably seven weeks pregnant. I don't know because I know for a fact I only had sex in f***ing 
Valentine's Day and before I got my surgery. Next thing you know, when I get to New York and I go to my OBGYN and now she's doing my sonogram, she's like, oh my gosh. And like where she said, oh my God, like so loud like that. I was like, what the f I got twins or something like she's freaking me out when I said that she was like you're not like seven weeks pregnant or six weeks pregnant I'm like what she's like you're like 17 weeks pregnant mm. Mm -mm. yeah so she found out that's how she found out and then um she talks about the fact that she had actually went and got surgery on her body because she didn't know she was pregnant and I did all that surgery and everything for a long time I was a little bit afraid because I was like oh my god did did that ever affect my baby? Like, I, 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 I got a whole surgery and everything. But deep down in my heart, I knew that I was going to have a good baby because first thing first, my OBGYN was not playing. She sent me to the best places to make sure the baby was super, super healthy. And then second of all, like, cause I, I, like I said, I know for a fact that God sent me this baby himself. And God wouldn't send me nothing that is, wasn't going to be right. And then uh, lastly, she talked about some of her insecurities when it comes to like dropping music and, and just different things she's doing right now. The critiques and the social medias and all that stuff, I have let that get in my head for a very long time to the point that it has made me insecure with my own work, with my own accent, with my own self, with my own attitude. Like it got to the point that pe some people that are close to me be like, yo, I don't even know you anymore. Like it's like, this has never been you. When have you cared? When have you cared to, to drop shit? Like, if, when have you cared about having an accent in your music? When have you cared about this? A lot of people be like, oh, it's your kids. She's been delaying herself for the kids, the kids. And it's never really my kids. I have to take accountability that is myself. And I have to be more confident in myself. I do feel like the internet for a long time, I feel like that sh really traumatized me. And I went for a long time with the internet traumatizing me, traumatizing me, and not getting, like, therapy for it. Stop listening to these digital D heads on social media. That's just not for body. That's for everybody. Like these folks online are miserable and they want to make you miserable. Mm -hmm. Who is the person on social media that gets positive feedback for anything? The mm. fact that you even got to think about it is yeah, the problem. Yeah, because I was going to say Oprah, but they be dragging they her be too. They be dragging yeah. Oprah. What are you talking about? I was going to say they be dragging sis, but I can't call. I Oprah can't talk eats, about Oprah like uh, that. According to the internet, Oprah eats babies. Yeah. On top of pizza. She eats babies. On top she of hates black <laughs> men. Em empanada infants all she, day. Like empanada everything. Infants, her and Gail go together yeah, real they, bad. They, they, they hate black men, hate black people. <laughs> like, yes. It's a beef fatty baby. But I, I will now, say Yeah, I will say she just got to drop. I mean, Cardi knows the pulse of what's going on. She's outside, so she's in those venues. She sees what people are rocking to. I heard she does have the music. So now it's just a matter of just drop. She won already. Yep. Like, like she's really playing with house money at this point. Mm -hmm. For real. Like, 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 like she's, she's actually putting an unnecessary expectation on the music. Right. Yep. Like, just, just drop. Yep. yep. And let's start the podcast. The Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast is ready to make an offer. Because if you're going to be, you know, giving it up like that on social media, you might as well monetize Oh, it. she does these lives <laughs> all the time. <laughs> lives and Twitter, uh, her ex spaces. <laughs> She loves keeping people in tune. That would actually be really Let's great for her. That would be so great for okay. her. Mm -hmm. She needs to do it around the album. It doesn't be even have to be long. In fact, she could take what she's doing on IG Live and we'll post it as a podcast. No, Charlotte, for real. <laughs> no, just 30, oh, she needs 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. No, for Cardi, because I know you'd be listening. Please call Unc, because that would be so fire around the album, because I'm sure each song has such a story. And she was talking about, too, how everybody was on her like, oh, you hiding a pregnancy, you hiding a pregnancy. She's like, I really just didn't know for so long. She said even her parents were like, you know we know you're pregnant right and she was like please don't put no more pressure on me i just found out so mm. it wasn't this master mm. scheme like all of the fans and all that you know they, that they thought it was um moving on dame dash jay-z y'all remember a few weeks ago we reported about the city of new york the social services department filing all these different motions mm -hmm. and going back and forth with um jay-z's attorney on dame's behalf sort of kind of but more on the city's behalf mm -hmm. dame said you reported this wrong so what it, happened okay so let me let me make okay. sure i get it right because dame was upset because you basically I said, ba what i reported was what i knew was going to happen mm -hmm. and i i would say i apologize if he felt a way about it but i may uh, we'll, we'll get to it so this is what happened so during that time when we reported it um jay-z's side had filed this uh copyright notice right mm -hmm. that copyright notice was basically saying look in the year 2031 i don't want anything to be able to go anywhere else it's going to come back to me jay-z because i am the author of the reasonable doubt which was a work made for hire his third right now social services department said because it was listed the agreement listed it as a work made for hire mm -hmm. you're violating the agreement the 2031 is not true we need a judge to stop this auction we need a judge to go in 
look at all the money that was made, see how much it's really worth because basically Jay-Z is trying to, and Jay-Z and team allegedly are trying to make this worth less so they can come in at the end of the day, swoop it, um, and, they're, and they're doing that by saying, oh, Jay-Z is going to own this anyway, so it's no point in buying it. Right. So a judge recently uh, made a decision after all the notices um, and actually, this decision screws Dame Dash. And I actually felt a bit bad for him, and I'll explain okay. to you why in a second. So, the judge is saying, basically, I'm not about to go here with y'all. So, they asked for a stay of auction, which would have been holding the auction off until a judge could, number one, determine if the notice that Jay-Z filed with uh, the copyright offices was valid. Um, the judge said, no, the court does not have the jurisdiction to do that. Um, and... What's crazy about that is, is that at this point in time, so the social services department, who aren't Dame's attorneys, they work for the city, they could go back in and say, no, judge, you made a wrong decision. I don't know if they're going to. But if they don't, at this point, Dame Dash doesn't really even have the time. They ran out the clock to go in and contest mm -hmm. this, this copyright notice, right? So what will happen from there is after this, like all of this happens, right? The auction happens everything uh, what they think what people think will happen is jay-z going to come in on last minute it's going to be now worth less he'll he'll get these uh he'll he'll own uh dame stake in it the only person that will be able to even contest um jay-z basically saying this is mine it reverts back to me in 2031 is biggs mm -hmm. he's not going to do that mm -hmm. so now you x dame dash out of the conversation completely so pretty much if you are going to bid on that you're going to bid low because you just don't know what the hell's happening you don't know what that you don't know what's happening mm -hmm. right you don't know at all so you bid low someone like jay-z or whoever but then jay-z has first right of refusal so whatever the lowest bid is jay-z could you know match that bid and then take the third basically what what dame was claiming from the beginning was it, could, do you remember when we spoke to him he was claiming mm -hmm. from the beginning that they're basically jay-z was basically positioning himself in a way where it was going to put everybody else in the corner mm -hmm. and that's exactly what this is lining up to be that's crazy um now so Dame has from what now to 2031 to make money off it? No, if if this so when this well, auction, auction happens, the, the auction the weeks? auction is supposed to happen. Oh. When the auction happens, Jay Z is going to own this. Uh, put if it makes so if, Dame don't get his third. No, if Jay Z comes in and buys this, no, Dame will not. The money that will come, remember, because the state he has taxes, he has child support, he owes like lawyer fees mm -hmm. to, uh, and all that stuff for the Josh Weber guy, right? All of that is going to be paid. Whatever's left, Dame will get. But there might not even be much left because they've devalued. Right, but he's it. still owed a third or something. Yes, but it's not going yeah, to yeah. it's not yes. going to him though. Yeah, it's not going to him. Do you get what I'm saying? It's going to him, but he got to pay. Depending on how much yeah. money it is. Yeah, right. but it's, right, gotcha, but gotcha. but what is probably and that's why the city got involved because they're like, what's probably going to happen is it's going to devalue to the point where we might not even get our money. So Dame's not going to see much either because the city won't even see. What's much. crazy know is, is you know they were best friends, right? And that's why I feel like it's so... That's crazy. I'm Jay like, on a friend level, it's friends. like, dang. 20 years ago, guys. But on a business friends? level, it, it, was a, it was a shot clock move. Uh, a, a thug changes, love changes, best friends. And if Dame has an issue with it this, happens. please talk to uh, some attorneys because I... I that, was not, that was not... That was not... Oh, yeah, right. That Listen, was not... Was uh, Dame is getting the camera crew ready right now. There will be a video on the America New Network YouTube channel later today because both sides will be heard, Lauren. Yeah, he's going to be on there. I don't think he likes how you report it. He's probably going to be on there screaming at me. Ah, look. Nothing I can do. Yeah, he has, actually has a show called Bosses Take Losses, and he talks about it every every week. Yeah, that I mean, his network has a lot of content, so we'll be mm -hmm. looking for it. All right. Well, that was Jess with the Mess with Lauren LaRosa. Now, when we come back, we got the People's Choice Picks. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, we got to salute Byron Donalds, congressman from Florida, for joining us this morning. Salute to Byron Donalds, man. Uh, we'll got check a little spicy earlier. Uh, not really. It's just a this healthy conversation between him and Angela Rye, you know, but you can uh, go check that conversation out on the Breakfast Club YouTube page right now. Uh, we had a comedian up here this morning, this guy we always give opportunity to. You know, he's just always trying to figure it out. Trying give to figure opportunity his life out. is insane. Oh, uh, it's true. He's just, he, you, know, you know, we like to do that type of stuff here. We like to give people that, you know, need it opportunities to, you know, be successful. Why are you amateur night at the Apollo on him right now? Well, Donnell Rollins. Yes, Donnell Rollins stopped here early. Salute early. to Donnell. Yes. yes. He bought yes. us all gifts. Yes. And I want to tell everybody, too, man, make sure you uh, go register to come to my fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo, which is happening October 12th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square. You know, we bring together some of the best uh, mental health professionals and, and, and psychiatrists, you know, therapists from all around the country, spiritual leaders. And we have a lot of great people there this year. Dr. J. Barnett will be there. Dr. Shan Bryan will be there. Elliot Connie will be there. Dr. Rita Walker. Dr. Alfie Breland Noble. Uh, Tyrese will be there in conversation with Jason Wilson. And uh, we got some other guests that we'll be adding um, real soon. But it's a day of mental health, healing, and education. It's free for all ages. All you got to do is go to mentalwealthexpo.com for more details or to register. But you don't have to register. You can just show up. 
So 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., Marriott Marquis, Times Square, my fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo. I'll see you there. All right. When we come back, we got the positive notice, the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Laurel LaRosa filling in for Jess. Now uh, it's time to get up out of here. Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do. And it's really just um, a message to, you know, everybody born in the 1900s. Uh, as you get older, and not even just everybody born in the 1900s, just people who are, you know, of a certain age. As you get older, you can energetically feel the difference between people who care about you and those who care at their own convenience. I repeat, as you get older, you can energetically feel the difference between people who care about you and those who care at their own convenience. Be aware of that energy and make wise choices about the people you have around you. Have a great day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?